Well, welcome everyone to Check Yourself. This is the September webinar for the Rotary Zones 3334 Public Image Team. And we like to have this webinar at least once every couple of years, if not more frequently, because there's so many updates to the Brand Center and a lot of really great information and tools and resources that are available to public image chairs and all Rotarians and Rotor actors. And we want you to understand how to be consistent and uh, follow the Rotary Brain guidelines, not just how to do it, but understand why it's important. So welcome to this evening's webinar. We have a very special guest speaker this evening who I'll introduce in just a moment. But before we get started, I ask you to all please remain on mute throughout this presentation. We'll allow you to come off mute towards the end when we have a Q&A session and some interactive participation. But if you could all make sure you're muted and remain on mute during the presentation, that would be really helpful. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use the chat feature. If you type all your questions in chat, our team will try to respond to them throughout the presentation. Um, and if we don't cover those through the chat, then we'll uh, make sure to try to circle back around to your questions during the Q&A portion at the end. We are recording this, so if there was anyone in your club or district who may have wanted to attend or you feel could benefit from this information, Look out, from an, look out for an email from our team towards the end of this week. It'll have a link to the recording with some other um, helpful tools and resources as well. And with that, I also want to welcome the Zones 33 and 34 public image team members who are on the call tonight, including my counterpart, uh, Rotary Public Image Coordinator for Zone 33, Billy Black. And team, if you guys all just want to give a wave and say hello. My name's Susan Corder. I am the Rotary Public Image Coordinator for Zone 34. And uh, just please understand that we uh, are, have been working really hard to try to, to provide you with as many tools and resources to make your job successful this year and help you tell your Rotary story successfully. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to any one of us on the team if there's something that you need, a question that you have. If you're not quite sure if your uh, club is using the right logo or your district event is using the right branding, just shoot it over to us and we'd be happy to take a look and advise you as best we can. And with that, I want to introduce everybody to Liz Chong. She is Rotary International's brand specialist. Liz has been with Rotary since 2008, and she has been the brand specialist since 2018. Now, in her role, Liz focuses on ensuring that all of our members and the Rotary International staff are using Rotary's visual identity and Rotary marks correctly and consistently. Liz lives with her uh, outside of Chicago with her husband and her two sons. And I will tell you personally speaking that Liz has been an amazing resource for me in the zone public image role. She is super knowledgeable about the Rotary brand and can answer any question under that the sun that you have with regards to Rotary brand guidelines and do's and don'ts of using the Rotary logo. So uh, we are very fortunate and grateful for Liz to be here tonight and give this presentation. And with that, Liz, I welcome you. Thanks, Susan. That was so kind. I really, really appreciate your kind words, your introduction. And as I look around the room, I actually see some familiar faces because about 10 years ago, I worked in your region as your annual giving officer. My maiden name was Lazar at the time, um, but I took my husband's name, though we've been married for nearly 20 years. <laughs> but um, it's great to see some familiar faces again. And I am thrilled to be working with members again in this role. Um, and I'm really passionate about this topic. And as I get into the presentation, I think you'll, you'll see that come through. So without further ado, I'm going to launch. And um, I think after the presentation, we've allotted a bit of time for some Q&A. So tonight we'll discuss um, Rotary branding, we're gonna start with the fundamentals with the logo, then we'll get into some um, deeper um, detail. Uh, usually these are, I guess, like commonly asked questions and we'll um, maybe demystify um, some, some lingering questions out there. So we'll start with this refresher. We'll talk about how to use the Rotary name and how to protect the Rotary name and why that is so important. Um, we'll talk about 
licensed vendors and the, the importance of using them, what to do if you can't use them. We'll talk about the nuances of the lockup, which is when you're combining your club logo with another logo. And then we'll talk about a somewhat new guideline that was um, released called geographic identifiers. And basically this is a solution to uh, more clearly brand your projects, usually when you're, you're collaborating with other clubs or your groups of districts working together on a project. So with that being said, um, and I think what I really want to reiterate is the information that I'm sharing with you tonight, I'm doing so, so that you're well equipped to, um, to work with the clubs that you serve. Um, I want to really empower you with this information. This information is derived from our eyes code of policies, which is established, um, you know, by your directors. So um, just know that the information I am sharing here is really how the organization um, sees our interaction and our representation of our, our logos and our name. So without further ado, uh, about 10 years ago, we rebranded. We went from a round two color logo to a master brand signature, which is more of a rectangular logo. It is both the components of that rotary word mark and the wheel together. Those are not two separate components. They are one component and one logo. In addition to the master brand signature, we have a second logo or a um, dual logo. They are both kind of at the same um, priority. And that's the simplified logo. So that simplified logo or the traditional logo can be used. And it is a matter of preference on which logo a club wants to use with their club logo. Um, the simplified logo does not have a simplified mark of excellence. Um, and the mark of excellence is like a secondary logo. So this is a little bit, it's a little complicated and um, we're always happy to answer questions that come up about this, but essentially the mark of excellence still serves as an identifier of Rotary. It's really handy on um, products that are circular. So think road signs, jewelry, golf balls, um, pins, um, it can be used in conjunction with the master brand signature. So let's say you have a flyer, your main logo on your flyer is going to be your club logo, and then the mark of excellence could be placed somewhere else on that flyer. Um, but that's a bit of information to kind of uh, define how, how, we, how we look at our logos and, and how they're used. Um, Next slide, sorry about that. All right, so I've been referring to a club logo and this is what I mean by that. I'm sure you're probably familiar with this, but I just wanna reiterate all clubs, their official logo must be the Rotary Master Brand plus the name of their club. Um, no additional content, there's no additional descriptions of the club, there's no themes. There are, um, you don't add, you don't have to add the district number with the club logo. The club logo is just simply the name of the club. And the way that the club logo is created is either by, um, it's like how it rolls off the tongue. So if you say your club name is the Rotary Club of Evanston, that's how you would lay it out. If it's the Evanston Rotary Club, then the word Evanston would go on top, then the Rotary logo club on the bottom. So over here, you can see that example with the Sunrise Kampala Rotary Club. Um, again, we, we threw in examples of both the traditional and the simplified logo. A district logo should only be the word district plus the four, di the four digits that accompany obviously the district number and the same with the zone. It's simply just the, the word zone and the zone number. Uh, these same rules apply for Interact and for Rotaract, and the structures are the same. So why is it important that we're going to, to use 
this, um, this club logo system. So first of all, doing so protects Rotary's uh, name and intellectual property. Um, if you are a policy reader, <laughs> Article 34 of the RI Code of Policies discusses how essentially Rotary International owns the mark and that it like lends it to clubs in a sense if the clubs add their name to the logo. So that is how the use of that trademark is transferred to clubs. Um, of course, we want clubs to get the credit and the recognition that they deserve for the good work that's happening in their community. So adding that club name to the Rotary logo is essential. And the third point, I think maybe the most powerful of all three is that we're telling our story in a consistent way where when all clubs are using that branding correctly, it's going to be a more powerful impact for those not familiar with Rotary. They're going to see those same logos again and again and again. And instead of like maybe let's say the homemade logos that are out there or versions of the, the retired logo, right? Um, so when we're all using the club logos consistently, our impact will be, um, it'll be felt greater. So some guiding principles to keep in mind as you're working with clubs and really kind of explaining the importance of why and how to do this correctly. Again, just simply adding the name. Uh, when you're in the brand center, which is where these logos must be created, the brand center will ensure that the spacing, the font, the colors, um, and the layout is all correct. We've seen a lot of clubs that kind of take the Rotary Master brand and then cut and snip their name in there. And you can tell that like, they just weren't familiar that the brand center had this really sleek tool that'll just do it right there for you. So keeping that in mind, helping clubs with that when needed is great. We have videos in the brand center of how to do it. Um, keep in mind to never obscure the rotary logo or use a partial wheel or use the wheel in place of numbers or objects. This really, really just waters down our logo. It weakens it and that develops mistrust, essentially. I mean, and I'm talking about any logo, right? That's that's just how we how logos are treated throughout the world. Similarly, um, you know, like, making the Rotary logo a subordinate part of another logo. It's like, this looks sleek. These look, you know, designed really well, but now we're gonna have 36,000 different club logos out there again, right? And so um, steer, steering clear of, of this kind of um, mutilation, I suppose, of the logo is the way to go. And of course, retiring, any previous versions of the Rotary logo that are out there. Um, it's so interesting to sometimes look at club websites and see that they do have their club logo correct in the top left corner, and that looks fantastic. And then you scroll down on the page and there's some old wheels hanging out there. And this is probably just because, um, you know, there hasn't kind of been like a holistic look at all of the different placements of the logos that a club has. I think clubs will be surprised when they take that opportunity um, to look everywhere in their digital space and everywhere in their physical spaces where that old logo still exists. So um, shifting, um, shifting a bit, we're going to now talk about the name. Um, the rotary name is really just as important as using the logos correctly. Um, the rotary name, much like the logos, has to be used in conjunction, in conjunction with the name of the club. So using rotary at large isn't allowed. Um, one thing that I think happens quite a bit is because you're members of rotary, we think, oh, well, and, and I get this, it's very personal, right? Um, that when you're a member, then you kind of have access to that, that word. We see folks using it in you know, their personal businesses, they start nonprofits, 
um, and on and on and on. And, and they kind of co-opt that, that Rotary name because they're a member of Rotary. And I know that the intention is there, but just know like that's, that's not allowed. Um, using the Rotary name is uh, the only way to use the Rotary name is to do it through your club or through your district or through your zone. So if you, um, for example, are hosting an event um, with other Rotarians, it should be coordinated through the clubs and then the clubs would put their names on the event. Um, so consider the risk of using um, not only both the Rotary name, but your club name in your community. Um, I'm just asking you to consider I'm not here to offer any legal advice at all, but think about um, how your how the name is out there, how the name is in your community and what it's associated with. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we see the Rotary name like given to, and usually what happens is a club is a huge donor of, let's say maybe um, a food bank or a homeless shelter in their community. And they give the Rotary name to the homeless shelter. And now that name is now Rotary International is not in control of this homeless shelter, obviously, or this food bank or whatever, uh, an ice skating rink, right? It could be anything, a, a botanical garden. Um, but our name is now associated with it or your club's name is now associated with it. And so just consider, um, consider the implications of that. So here are some examples of commonly seen misuses of the name, and I tried to kind of categorize them together to give you an idea of the topics that we're seeing, and maybe this resonates with what is happening in your area. So the first would be events that are happening. Make sure that your events are named after your club. So if you're hosting a 5K, a run, a fundraiser, it should be the Rotary Club of Evanston 5K. Um, the same is said with just the, the word Rota. We see that kind of manipulated often and turned into something else that is still a rotary mark and um, that should not be used in that way. Uh, a rotary food drive is another example. The second bullet is really giving the rotary name away to a third party. So think about um, a rotary stadium, right? Like third party um, naming rights, those have huge contracts involved. They have, um, you know, a lot of stuff that happens behind the scene when a, when a stadium or a building or any kind of, you know, permanent structure is, um, is named something and usually because of a large donation. Um, so keep these in mind. Um, as you go forward. And the solution, instead of giving the Rotary name away or your club name away to these things, the solution is to put up huge signage around these physical places and put your club logos there and tell the story about how your club is involved um, with this um, stadium or with these gardens, what your club does to sustain them and to care for them and why that matters. And that invites people in and to learn more about your club and learn more about what you're doing in your community simply than handing the rotary name over which honestly if they're not familiar with rotary really falls flat because they wouldn't even make the association the next example are nonprofits that get started or um, kind of pet projects that get started using the rotary name unfortunately we see these happen quite a bit um, the example after that is folks from all over the world who may get together. This is usually like virtually, right? So you have this huge network of, of rotor actors or of alumni or whoever they may be, you know, Rotarians that like bifocal sunglasses, I don't know, right? And then they get together online and they use that rotary name to define themselves. Um, that's not allowed because, um, this, in this example, Rotor Actors for a Better World, that looks as it that looks as though as if uh, Rotary International's Rotor Act Group has launched a campaign, right, called Rotor Actors for a Better World. 
The last example is that all of these rules also apply to any URLs, any websites that are created. Um, the website must have the name of the Rotary Club in it. So the Rotary Club of Evanston Saves Lives is a great URL, um, but without it, um, that looks as if it's a, it's a site that Rotary International runs. All right, we're gonna touch on licensed vendors. Licensed vendors, RI licensed vendors, are those obviously that have a relationship with us and um, a contract and agreement with us, but they also um, are guaranteed to reproduce the trademark correctly. Uh, of course, we hear stories sometimes of, of that happening incorrectly, and we want to hear when that happens. So please, you know, contact us if you're seeing licensed vendors producing things that aren't on brand. But we do have relationships with these folks, and we have conversations all the time about what they're creating. Um, and when items are created from unlicensed vendors, that's when we see, and you've seen this, that's when we see folks wearing T-shirts that are manipulating the logo, that have some phrasing or mottos on them that just aren't aligned with our brand. Um, you know, sadly, we still see people like getting t-shirts made with a 10-year-old logo on them. Uh, and this is all because they're not using an RI licensed vendor. So getting the word out to drive, drive that kind of traffic to the vendors is great. However, I do know that that's not always realistic. Um, it's not always, you know, time prohibitive, cost prohibitive, prohibitive. So there is a process where the vendor that you're, you're working with can reach out to our licensing group and receive a one-off approval. It's a free process. It's a pretty quick process. And that way we just ensure that those marks are being reproduced correctly. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll drop that URL in the chat so that you all have that link. Um, and then really quickly, I was asked to touch on branding on merchandise versus branding that the clubs do. So um, I know this picture is confusing because I just told you that the one on the left isn't allowed, but why is the one on the right allowed? So the one on the right, is not a logo, it's a physical pin. And the pin is showing, um, you know, Rotary's association with, uh, I believe this is for peace. And so product placement of the logo is very different than official club logos. I shouldn't say very different, but it, it there are differences. And um, I guess one thing I want to say is the one on the right should never be used as a logo. You shouldn't take a picture of a pin and then use that as, as a logo, right? The pin is the pin. Products have their place for, um, for expressing and showing the brand. And we have to get creative with products to be able to place our, our logos on them. Uh, otherwise, it's just a dove. And it, that wouldn't mean anything, right? So um, in a nutshell, that is the explanation behind um, product placement and the, and the Rotary logo and how clubs should be using the logo for their official club logos. All right, and now lockups. So lockup is when the Rotary Club is going to join with somebody usually in their community, usually it's an organization in their community, or it's an event that they're hosting, or it's a sponsor for an event, or it's a, a program that the club runs. Um, that's called lockup. So we're taking the club logo on the left, a vertical line, and then this logo or a phrase on the right, and we're locking these two things together. This is to be used um, just for the time to promote whatever you're promoting. These are not meant to be all-time club logos, like this Helping Hands one at, with the Sunrise Kampala Rotary Club. That's not 
their official logo. Their official logo is only the club name. Um, sometimes we see clubs, you know, trying to do the lockup and they put maybe like their old logo on the right or they put their club's theme on the right or we see a lot of different things. The lockups are simply to be used um, to promote this kind of one time, you know, maybe it's an annual event, maybe it's um, whatever, whatever sponsor may, may be happening, right? Um, you also will notice that there's only one partner. We don't have multiple lockups. There aren't many vertical lines locking up a lot of different logos. So if you have a lot of partners, what you can do is just place their logos separately and you lead with your club logo. Your club logo could be in the top left and all of your sponsors could be listed down below in equal um, presence. Um, what's another situation is if um, you could also choose, let's say you have a major sponsor and then several smaller sponsors, you could choose to put your major sponsor in lockup if you'd like. Um, and also the RI president's theme goes in a lockup too. And the audience for the RI president's theme is other members of Rotary. So keep that in mind um, when we talk about the theme and when clubs are used and districts are using the theme. Um, and that's just the RI theme. Um, I would really, uh, <laughs> let me have to choose my words carefully here, but I would probably not recommend district themes or club themes. I, less is more when it comes to the club logo. And that club logo is really what we want to see again and again and again for the identifiers that a club uses. So speaking of identifiers, here's a way where um, clubs can get together or districts can get together and use the Rotary logo to identify themselves. Usually this is when an event is happening or a, um, let's say like a training in a region is happening or, um, you know, somebody's coming to speak and you have like 20 different clubs that are coming and you wanna to put together a flyer for this, the event. If you're able to identify a geography that brings all of your clubs together or brings all of your districts together, and it can be any geography, it can be, you know, the west side of Miami, right? Rotary clubs of the west side of Miami. Um, that is an opportunity to use a geographic identifier. I have a lot more information about the ins and outs of that on the Brand Center, so be sure to check that out. Um, but this is great because really sometimes district numbers fall really flat if you're doing an event with several districts with the general public and you want to use that Rotary logo. Um, I love this solution for, for when we're working with the public and they don't know what a zone number is or what a district number is. Um, so this is a great, um, a great way to use the logo and kind of not bend the rules, but just kind of meet meet you where you're at, right? So I went through a lot tonight. Everything nearly that I mentioned is on the Brand Center. Uh, we just released information on there about how to use the Rotary name. That's maybe about a month old or a few weeks old. We also just added information, some visuals about do's and don'ts for how to use the logo. Um, of course, the templates are there. There's a lot more stuff on the Brand Center than even I mentioned tonight, stuff that has to do with people of action, um, lots of photos, videos, et cetera. But the Brand Center is the place to go. I think the big thing when you're working with your clubs is to reiterate the Brand Center and tell them like Google is not your friend when it comes to the Rotary brand. People are Googling fun Rotary thing, Rotary logos all the time and they're all just mutilations of the logo. So um, the Brand Center also doesn't require a My Rotary login. So it's a great place to share even with like a local vendor you're working with um, who needs to understand how to use the brand. 
I talked about licensing quite a bit. So my colleague's email address is rilicensingservices at rotary.org. Uh, there's a PDF document in the Brand Center called Your Logos at a Glance. This is a great one to have on hand at your desk. It's a great one to hand out at training. It's a great one if you're you know, communicating, reaching out to your club public image chairs, you're going to send them you know, a link to the Brand Center, this PDF, and then have them take the courses in public image in the Learning Center, which is this um, next um, bullet after the code. I think to get them started in a really good place and them understanding the logos, those three resources are really all you need. I had mentioned the code earlier. I just list it there so that folks know that all of this content really has its root, its foundation back in the, in the code of policies. And then finally, when you want to contact me, I'm at brand at rotary.org. I'm available for trainings. I'm available for stumping questions, questions that have stumped you. I'm available um, really for anything um, that we've covered tonight. And if it's not that, I can get you to the right person. Um, so with that, I am going to stop sharing. And just thanks so much for your time. I know it's a lot of information. I know I have a strong Wisconsin accent, so I hope everything was readily understood. Thank you. Liz, before you move on, we I may have given out erroneous information. Can we put our club name with the correct logo on the left-hand side of the lockup and the district name on the right-hand side of the lockup? Both of no. those appropriate logos, but no. No, no, no. Guys, I lied. The only thing that goes over on the right is a sponsor, a partner, an event, or a program. The club yeah. logo should only be the club name. A lockup is only a, like a one-time use. It's not meant to be your official logo. Thank you, Liz. I think a good rule of thumb that will just help take care of a lot of these errors is if you don't create it on the brand center, don't use it. So yeah. if you're in Canva or Illustrator or some other program where you're moving the text around to fit it under the master brand so you have your club name attached or you're trying to match a partner up with your logo um, in a format of a lockup, but you're not using it from the brand center, you're not downloading it, creating and downloading it from the brand center, then don't use it at all. Don't um, grab, for example, if you're looking for um, the lockup with a theme this year, you can create that in the brand center. You can download the theme and create it in the brand center. Don't go to Google and search for the theme and download it from Google because it might be right, but there's a good chance it might be wrong or distorted. And um, just always use a brand center as your point of reference is the easiest rule of thumb, I think, to get us there. So we, we are gonna allow for some questions and answers in just a minute, but since we're hot off the press with some of these really great tips on how to use the Rotary logo wisely and correctly, I'm gonna launch us into a really quick exercise. And the essential instructions for the exercise are when you see the photo on the screen, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I want you to look at it, evaluate it internally and think about is it right or is it wrong? And if it's wrong, what, why and what could you do to um, make it brand compliant? So let's take a look at the first one here. So these are some club logos and all of the logos that we're going to go through are online right now. So I, um, my team and I did some recon before today's uh, presentation and uh, these are a few club logos that we found. Um, does anyone want to raise their virtual hand and we'll call you out to um, let us know if these are brand compliant or not? And if they're not, what you could do to make them brand compliant? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Leah, go ahead and unmute and let us know your thoughts. Thanks, Susan. Hi, everyone. Um, the first one on the left they're using the old master, they're using the old um, mark of excellence. So it has that dual color. Yep. 
So that's incorrect. That is in that order is to in order to correct it, they'll have to use the proper mark of excellence, but they'll also have to go to the brand center and create their logo in there because then this whole layout is also incorrect with the the Rotary Club Boca Raton coming across the top as well as the the theme in there that's incorrect and that green swirly thing that that's not in compliance with Rotary branding for a club logo. Yep, you're you're one hundred percent on point there, and you can see that the there's a different format of the blue and gold logo on the right. So um, we know that's not brand compliant as well. And in all of these, um, the rotary mark of the mark of excellence is inserted um, into the logo. It's not using the uh, the master brand with our signature. So even though the center one has the correct wheel and the right. Um, font and colors, it's still not in the right format. So we want the rotary on the left of the wheel with the club name either above or below. Leah, thank you for, for stepping up on that one. Let's take a look at what we have next. So these are some really uh, creative uses of the rotary logo to celebrate uh, various holidays. So does anyone want to take a stab and just give me a quick answer at looking at these, maybe across the board, why they're incorrect? If you just raise your hand, uh, Janelle, go ahead. Let's hear what you have to say. Hi, everybody. Well, um, none of these are brand compliant. Well, the first pumpkin, though it's cute. One, it has the old um, mark of excellence. And you just don't mix the rotary logo with other things like pumpkin eyes. The second, the chicken or whoever he is. Um, good, good, good gesture, service above self, but we can't see the other wording for international. So even though it was slightly correct, it's totally incorrect. One, wrong mark of excellence. Two, not to be used like that. Um, oh, it's actually part of his feathers. I didn't realize. That's very interesting. <laughs> very creative. And very creative. And Santa has no call in there. Sorry, Santa. <laughs> yep, you're absolutely right. So you can you can get creative with your holiday flyers, but make sure you're putting your club or district on there as as you've downloaded the logo from the brand center. Okay, so these are all some events uh, from events that are out there. Um, actually, I will say that the the one on the bottom in the center, the Halloween, has been corrected. I just put it up there as an example of a, a flyer that was used in previous events. But does anyone want to take a stab at what's what's not right on these logos? You have to raise your virtual hand so I can see you. Well, just as we, I will pop in and answer this one, just as we have been saying before, um, again, this is a misuse of the mark of excellence. It should not ever be used as an object, an O, a zero. Um, in any of these logos. So use your club or, or district logo in the lockup format. Angelica, did you want to add anything else to that? Yes, it, it just, uh, we, we keep in seeing those kinds of stuff with the uh, rotary logo. And if you work in any corporation, any corporation, this is a standard. You have to use the logo as it is. You cannot modify the logo because it belongs to it, it, you know, it's it's private and uh, we cannot distort, we cannot play, you know, play with the teams, with the logo. This is this is something that any corporation, it's not just Rotary, it, it, it's, it, it, people have to really understand this is, you it, know, it, it's not possible. It's okay. Right. You know, it, it's, it's not just Rotary being flexible, mm. whatever. This any any is like a you know I work in a corporation. Anything I do, even the Facebook, if I put it the name of my corporation in my Facebook, uh, the IT receive the information to see what I'm me what I'm writing in my Facebook, my personal Facebook. So we have to be careful because a lot of people is watching us there, and we have to be constant. In, you know, has how do you call it? Uh, uh, 
We need consistency. Consistency. We need consistency. That's the word. Yeah. Consistency. We need to, we, yes. Thank you. Yeah. We need to maintain our brand integrity, just like the uh, these other major brands do. Our brand integrity that that portrays trustworthiness. Well, that's so, serious. You're that's absolutely serious right. One. Yeah. And there's another example that's just of again as we start to see clubs that are having their centennial celebrations remember don't use that mark of excellence as a zero i see that on a frequent basis and uh we need to make sure that we're we're not putting it there okay what about this one does anyone want to take a stab at this one just raise your virtual hand and i'll see you and call on you to answer mateo no it's not correct because you shouldn't have both the district number and the club name on the same. And plus, it shouldn't be two lines. It should be one line. Yep, you're 100% correct. So it's the district, as Liz, as Liz mentioned, it should be the district with the four-digit number um, underneath the Rotary logo. So you just take that North Georgia off of there, and it would be 100% brand compliant. Thanks, Mateo. Now this is a snippet from a club's Facebook page. So we're talking about social media now. Does anyone want to give us a quick evaluation of what's not right and how they could fix it? Just raise your hand and go for it. Hey, Bill, let's hear what you got. Okay, they're mixing um, our old mark to a new mark. If they would use the new mark and take away, how can I say this? The new one, the new, and I'm sorry, but it's a master brand, but the rotary with the rotary logo next to it is beautiful. Taking the old wheel and putting in the same thing. If they would take it by, and just use the mark you get off of um, the web page that they can make their own, that's what I want to say, they could take that away and put it down below. Right. So that if they if they download, if I'm hearing you correctly, if they download the mark of excellence from the brand center, they can put it there as the profile picture. Now in the cover photo, they have a really nice master brand, but I would I would ask the club or district to add their signature there. And let's just take it a step further since since we're making it brand compliant, but also following Rotary's brand standards. Um, why don't we try to work in some nice people of action photos in that cover image instead of just the master brand to make it a little bit more appealing? So uh, you can use the mark of excellence as the profile picture as they have here. Uh, we like to see the master brand um, in the profile in the in the cover photo or in some pin post up top. Uh, but also, again, take it farther in and make it a little bit more engaging. Mike, did you want to add anything to that? I see your hand raised. No, I want to go back to the other one uh, that you had before with the district and the club. So, and let me clarify for this one really quick. This is actually a district of North Georgia, so it's it wasn't the club name. Oh, okay. It, so, it was the... I sent some to Billy, and she said it was wrong. But I went into the Brand Central, and it says that you could put your um, club name above Rotary. And then the district below it, is that correct? No, so when you're when you're creating the master brand, and Liz, maybe you want to jump in here because we had a, a question about the lockup too. If you have multiple logos, um, you want your club identifier or your district identifier. So it's either the club name on the master brand or the district name on the brass master brand. It should not be one above or one below. Now, there are situations, and Liz, I don't know if you want to touch on this, but when there might be multiple clubs that have a project, do you want to have four, five, six Rotary Club logos on there? Or um, how would you maybe handle it in that situation if it's there's district and club logos that need to, to um, be on a flyer? Right. Great. Great question. So the official logo for District 6910 is only going to be the master brand with the word District 6910. Like that's their official district logo. However, if clubs in North Georgia are getting together to do a project, they can say Rotary Clubs of North Georgia in the logo to show that they're the clubs in North Georgia that are getting together to do this event. 
So it's like a one-time thing. It's not an official logo, right? I think I think that the struggle is that I'm giving you information tonight about what your official logos should be. And I'm also giving you information tonight about what you can do when you're hosting events. And, and we have some flexibility with the logos for hosting events. Okay, the, so my, my deal is I'm going to be district governor in a couple of years, and uh -huh. I want people to wear the shirts, but I, I want them to promote their clubs, and I want them to promote our district. Our district is a big district out here in California, and it just seems like we're missing that connection of people not understanding they're part of a district and a club. So I've seen it before where the club name would be on top and the district would be on bottom. And so I'm, I'm trying to get them to pro promote their club and to pro promote the district. So okay. you're saying sure. that they're gonna have to have two separate logos yeah. on their apparel. Yeah, you could have you know one on your lapel and one on the sleeve or something like that. Um, the solution that you're looking for is not a solution that we provide with the logo signature system. The system does a lot, but it doesn't do everything. And what you're asking for is just not, it's not one of the ways that the logo should be used. Okay, but I, I'm just trying to get a, um, you know, a, a understanding of the logos and stuff, because I am a graphic artist and it just seems like when we give people stuff that says um, the district on it, they don't wear it. Uh, they only wear it if it has their club on it because they want to promote membership to their club. Sure. They really don't care about promoting um, the district. And I want them in my year to be able to promote both. So that's, you know, having two logos, um, we would have to separate them because it would look goofy having two on your uh, chest or whatever, so. So you and I could probably talk offline about that and feel free to reach out to me at brand at rotary.org. I want to reiterate that your official district logo is never going to change. It's always going to be the four digits. However, like, let's say you want to do, do a t-shirt and you are the Rotary Clubs in North Central California. There's no problem with making a t-shirt that says Rotary Clubs of North Central California. Now, if you want to reiterate that district number, that's where we'll probably run into some issues. But there are a few solutions that we can try to figure out. So please reach out to me and I'm happy to work with you on that. Thank you, Liz. And Mike, thank you for raising the question. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly so we have time for a few more Q&As. Um, again, this is this really goes back to brand compliance and using the name Rotary. So um, anytime you're using the word Rotary, it has to be a Rotary approved program. You can't just add the word Rotary before or after um, a group of governors, for example, in this case. And you also cannot be using the mark of excellence on its own. Um, again, using the word Rotary to name a park, a hospital, a food bank, anything like that. Um, we definitely don't want to do. And if you were just an individual thinking, think about it, if you're an individual walking past and you saw this sign, there is no branding other than the word rotary. So it's, it's really not helping to identify your club or district. Um, and does anyone want to take a stab at this one? What's wrong with this, with this flyer and how could we fix it? So with this one, Matteo, go ahead. Thank you. There's no breathing space. You have you shouldn't have anything within the logo, and that encompasses the space between like the lower part of the rotary word and what's and the lowest part of the of the mark. I'm not sure how to phrase this, but it's it's too cloudy. Right. Yeah. So they've added. You can see someone sort of imposed this close right underneath the rotary logo, and that is not correct. Um, I would also take it a little bit farther and say, even if that wasn't there, that they should have additional spacing around the, the mark of excellence and the Rotary Master brand to make it very clear. That is the right Polio Plus Society pen, though. That is the one with the correct master brand that's out there. Uh, well, Marshall Butler, um, past RPIC, sent me this photo, 
and I figured I had to shame myself too, but there's some bad logos in the back of those backdrops. So just keep in mind if you're using a step and repeat banner to make sure it has the right branding. And if multiple clubs and districts are sharing it, there's step and repeat banners from the, from the brand center that you can purchase. Um, this one has got the old mark of excellence. Again, if this is an internal communication, it's okay to have that theme up top. Uh, but if this is being publicized, we really don't want to use create hope in the world. And uh, lastly, the, the club should identify uh, their club in the signature line and that logo up top. I think we all know that's the old theme and Liz covered when it's appropriate to use the internet or the president's theme. Um, and then last, this is just an example of a lockup that's obviously been created. So nothing about this was downloaded from the brand center with the exception of maybe the original master brand and the original theme, but everything else has been um, added to it. And uh, this should be a thin gray line here. Um, so if you're, again, just downloading from the brand center, you can be sure that it's going to be brand compliant. So we do have a few minutes for Q&A. And Liz, I just want to thank you so much for all of the knowledge you've uh, given us this evening. I know that this is, it, it's not an easy subject to master. So uh, I encourage everyone to continue to utilize your public image team, your public image chairs, um, the zone team and RI's resources uh, to make sure you're using the right branding. And with that, uh, Billy, do you did you have any questions that were raised we want to cover right now, or should we open it up to to anyone who might have something they want to bring up at this moment? There were there were a couple uh, in the Q and A, and you said you'd answer one. The first one is our website is www.rcsen.org. The Ryson stands for Rotary Clubs of Southeastern Nassau. Is that okay? So since it does not have the word Rotary, and Liz, correct me if I'm wrong, the acronym should be fine in the URL address. However, it might be less identifiable to people if you're trying to get your website more, no more well known. It has RC, something, something, something. R-C-S-E-N, it's under the Q&A. So RC means Rotary Club, so that's okay. Yeah, that should be okay. But yeah, I agree with Susan. They should, I mean, nobody really knows that acronym except the people in the club. So name it after the club. And Mateo oh. wanted to know if there was social media content brand guide. Um, there are several single page guides like Rotary's logo at a glance and things like that. But I would, if I were you, Mateo, please go to brand at rotary.org and tell them what you need and they will send you any of those documents that you'd like to use for training. I'm pretty sure there's a course in the Learning Center for Social Media too. So check that one out. There is absolutely. Yep. It's relatively that's, new. That's going to be the guidance that I'd give you. We're also going to plug um, our October webinar. I will uh, put it up in just a few minutes so you guys can take a look at it. But um, next month, this webinar next month is focusing on creating content. And that's for all channels, but a lot of it will be covering social media content, how to, how to generate that and keep it brain compliant. And the last Q&A is from Mary Drum. What about a street that's named Rotary Drive? So somebody else asked this in the chat too, and I said to get in touch with me. It might be possible, but we would need, I think we need to have a licensing, I think, agreement on that. I'm, I I don't know off the top of my head. Don't do it without getting in touch with us. I know that for sure. <laughs> I have time for one more. Mike, did you want to unmute and ask a question? Yeah, so look at my background. Is Are those logos compliant? I can't read the wording in some of them. They look to be compliant, although I would space them out a little more. Yeah, I'd have, the, I'd have the different let's have, fun, let's have fun is the um, DG's uh, motto this year. So, but I'm trying to get everyone else to put, you know, a little bit more emphasis on 
letting people know what we're doing, who we are. I'm the Interact Chair this year, Create Hope in the World. So yada, yada, yada. So we don't have specific guidelines that speak to this specifically, but for me, I would say if you're doing something for Interact, then use the Interact logo with the club, the Interact club name or the, the whatever district, whatever entity you're representing, have a background for that. If you're doing a club level event, have your club logo on that. If it's a district level event, have your district logo on that. Putting it all on one, to me personally, it just looks cluttered. But like I said, we don't have specific guidelines on that. And last question, Dawn. Yeah, so I was just looking at Mike's background. That middle one is the master brand, correct? It almost looks like the old one, doesn't it? Yeah, it's because it's a blue background. So that'll yeah, that check. Yeah, it'll trip you up sometimes because it's um, transparent. So on a blue background, it can look like the old one. And I would say for, for smaller um, publications and maybe like a Zoom background, the simplified version might stand out a little bit more. You might try each one and see, see which one um, looks better. Uh, be so before we close, I wanna go through just a couple of quick announcements and reminders for you guys. Um, this is the creating content webinar that I'd mentioned that we have on October 23rd. Uh, this is open to all our entire Rotary family, so uh, you don't have to be a PI chair to participate. We want everyone to um, understand that we're here to help provide these tools and resources, so please spread the word, and you can register there at elevaterotary.org. And just keep in touch with us. Like, join, follow, share our social channels. That's also a great way to grab content for your social media. We have... Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, we have a Vimeo channel. So we're we're very active and we're making a conscious effort to continue to put uh, scheduled content out there for you to communicate what's happening from the zone. And uh, we want you to interact with that and use that as content on your district and club pages. And there's our email right there if you have any questions. And a quick reminder, if you have not submitted your July, August, and September tasks, for uh, the Rotary Citation, the Zone 3334 Public Image Citation, please get those uh, turned in. We still have each of the three tasks open right now, but since they are foundational tasks, in order to qualify for the citation, you'll have to get those submitted within the next few weeks. And then October is live now. It's promoting a World Polio Day event. So tell us what you're doing to promote your World Polio Day event. Take photos and share the results afterwards and then submit that task for October so you can be on track to earn an award. And last reminder, our MAP webinar for Zones 3334 is coming up October 9th. So make sure you have that on your calendar. And, and if you have any membership people who aren't on the call tonight, but um, need this information, they can find it um, on DACDB or just let us know and we'll send a link directly. But they should be receiving the emails to register for this as well. Thanks everyone for attending tonight. Have a great evening.